Wait a minute, who's ready for the word? What's going to help you? Bless you. Heal you. Give God praise for the word. Glory to God. Well, welcome to those of you who are here in person, those of you who are looking on online. Um, today we had a little technical glitch, so you don't have your printed handouts. But guess what? Pastor sent them to you to your email. So if you got email, open them up. You can follow with email. Somebody say, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Ah, ah. That's plan B. At least I had a backup plan, okay? Praise the Lord. Brother Weber was sweating and praying, but that's okay. He's like, what you doing? Is it okay? Like, yeah, we got a backup plan, so it's all right. Pray with me, and we're going to get started. We got a very uh, important message for you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you and praise you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity to come and to hear from your holy uh, heaven, your holy hill, the holy word, we, your holy people. And Father, we just thank you and bless you and praise you that your Holy Spirit will speak through me. And we're going to be edified, built up in the things of God, leave here better than we came. And let every soul say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I, came I came to receive. And I shall receive. And I shall receive. Revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge. Of the goodness of God. Of the goodness of God. The greatness of God. The greatness of God. Who I am. What I, what I receive, what I can and should do, and should do. In, Christ Jesus. in Christ Jesus, amen, amen. and thank God. Amen. All right, give God some praise. We're doing this thing. Come on, amen. All right, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter number 2, 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 20, it says, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself or herself from the latter, in other words, for dishonor, he or she will be a vessel for honor. Say, I want to be a vessel for honor. I want to be a vessel for honor. Sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Church, I'm teaching from the Life Blessing Life Building life-changing series entitled Victory for what? Ministry. Ministry. Amen. It's the same uh, title of the vision of this church. Let's say it again. Victory for Ministry. Now, this is division two, and it's lesson number two. And let's have a couple little uh, statements to kind of review so we catch the essence of this series, the essence of this teaching. In other words, uh, your victory involves you, but it's about something greater than you. Amen? In other words, God is trying to bless you, but it's not just about you. Say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed to, be a blessing to be a blessing to others. To others. See, that everything that is created was created to benefit something or someone else. That's, that's an awesome thought, isn't it? Everything that was created is there to be a blessing to someone someone, or something else. And then the other key statement before we get into uh, today's subtitle is your personal victory is for your public ministry. Your personal victory is for your public ministry. In other words, uh, God's got to clean you up before he can send you out. Mm. He, he's trying to do a thing in you before he can do a thing through you. That's it. He's, he's, he's really trying to, but the end goal is to benefit others. Amen. Say, I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. On my way to heaven. Oh, yeah. yeah. God is really, I'm, and, and I'm talking to each and every person in here individually. Each person in here individually. Uh, I was so blessed. I, you know, I, as a pastor of the church, I call. Uh, on the members and check on people. Once again, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Not only in terms of my teaching gift, but in terms of my pastoral gift. You know, my wife is, uh, she and I are one in that. We really uh, abound in that because we love you all. And if we don't see you, we'll call you, we'll check on you because that's what pastoring is all about. Just give God a hand clap on that. And that's, it's, it's, it's about 
gives them, I, what do we say? Love does what? Love gives. Love gives. If you're not finding somebody giving, they ain't loving. Love, say love gives. Love gives. So I was uh, giving my love and care and attention. I was calling one of the members of the church. And, you know, I, I, don't, have to, I don't have to call um, Mother Cooper's name because I don't want, you know, people to feel like I'm just singling certain people out. But the point is, uh, I called her, and she was telling me this story, and it was such a blessing. So I, I hope you know I listen when you talk. She was telling me about someone that uh, she had known really for quite a while when they were growing up. And you know, the person wasn't always in the things of God. And while that person was growing up, she was always giving. And see, giving, I don't mean just giving money. You know, when you give love and you give wisdom and you give, give exact and you give exhortation about the goodness of God, somebody say that's giving. that's giving. So she was always giving to this person, and she hadn't seen the person in you know quite a while. And then she saw this person recently. She was on a trip and saw the person recently, and that person was talking about the Lord, talking about how they got to go to church. And she said, praise the Lord, hallelujah. She was so blessed because that which she had, you know, watered over the years, that, that fruit, that seed grew up and fruit was there. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. You don't know who you are impacting. You don't know who you're helping. It may take a little time, but see time, and there comes the harvest. Give God some praise. Amen. It's a blessing. So I, really, I was really blessed by hearing that. Well, our natural example is Peter, Simon Peter. And uh, let's pick this up because uh, this is Division Two, lesson number two. And today's lesson is entitled Restoration for a Reason. Restoration for a Reason reason. Uh, God, like I said, God wants to uh, restore you, but he's not just restoring you for, for nothing. <laughs> he, you know, he's restoring you because he's He's trying to get you ready to use you. Say, so use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Yeah, and if he's going to use you, he's got to restore you. And you say, well, Pastor, what do you mean he's got to restore me? Restore you from some stuff you did that was wrong. Oh, I'm so glad I got a few amens. Tell the truth, Michelle. Sh sh shame the devil. I said, restoring you from some things you did that were wrong, say amen. amen. All right. And, and, and if you heard me teach this series, I, I've been saying, I said it last week, I said, we are Peter. We are Peter. I, I, I can identify with Peter because Peter made some mistakes. But you know what's the great thing about Peter is, remember, out of the 12 apostles, Peter was the only one that said, I know who you are, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. So he also had some moments of revelation and brilliance. Amen? Amen. But at the same time, he's like us. He's, uh, uh, what, what would you call him, Camille? He's a complex character. He, he's, not, he's not all good, he's not all bad. He's got some, he's got some of those things, both those things, he's got some ghosts of the past, but he's, but, 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 he's got great potential. And he's arcing. He's changing. He's becoming who God wants him to be. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Talk to you. Say, we talk about Peter. Yeah. Say, we talk about us. <laughs> Peter is us. And that's why I like looking at his life. So watch this now. Remember, he was the one who was able to say, by the revelation of God, I know who you are, Jesus. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And God was like, hey. Flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my Father who's in heaven revealed that to you. And he said, now on that rock, I'll build my church. He said, Peter, you are a rock, and on that rock, I'll build my church. What he wasn't saying is, I'll build my church on Peter. He was saying, I'll build my church on the rock of revelation that you received, Peter. So if you receive the same rock of revelation that Peter received, then God can build the church. What was that rock of revelation? That Jesus is who? Christ, the Son of the Living God. Say, Jesus, Jesus is, Christ, is Christ, the Son of the Living God. Living or another way of saying that it would be that Jesus is the Lord, the only begotten Son of God. You, you understand what I'm saying? And now, this is important because we're living in a day and time where everybody's thinking that there are many ways to God. 
And I was reminded the other day when I was in a group with pastors, it's such a blessing, please come by here, you know it, but it's good to hear it. What did he say in John 14, 6? Jesus said, I am, I am, yeah, I like to say, like I am the way. I'm not a way. I'm not one of the ways. Jesus said, I am the way. And no one comes to the Father but through and by me. Give Jesus a praise. He's the way. That's it. That's it. So I, 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 I'm like, look, you know, we can sit down and we can talk about social issues. We can sit down and we can talk about political issues. We can sit down and we can talk about the entertainment issues, administrative issues, but I got news for you. When it comes down to the get down, if you ain't talking about Jesus, you're not getting to the Father. And if you don't have the Father on your side, then you out there fighting yourself. Amen? You fight the, like, like Brother Cooper said, you're fighting a long fight with a short stick. Amen? And that's not a good fight. Last time I looked, you're supposed to be fighting the good fight of faith. And that's with Jesus. Amen. So, so here we go. To speak, speaking of which, here's Peter now. He's not yet born again. He's not yet saved. So he's having flashes of, of, of brilliance and revelation. He knows who Jesus is. And because he knows who Jesus is, he's kind of feeling himself. The problem is he hasn't been born again. And so Jesus says, I'm getting ready to be crucified. And Peter is like, well, hey, if they come to get you, they got to come through me. He said, it's a big wolf chicken, isn't he? Somebody say, uh, Peter, uh, brother, hold, hold up, brother. Say, hold up, brother. Say, hold up, brother. Yeah, because, because he's not yet... He's not yet been delivered. Of course, Jesus hasn't died and, and, and resurrected, right? He hasn't been crucified and resurrected. So, so really, Peter doesn't have the helper on the inside of him. Amen? Amen. So he's really talking a big game, but, it, but, but, but he's, fight, he's fighting a long fight with a short stick. So he tells, he tells Jesus, I got you. I got your back. You ever heard some people talk about they got you and they got your back? But see, they don't have enough on the inside of them to have your back. <laughs> so he tells, he tells uh, Jesus he's got his back. And in Luke 22, Jesus prophesied to Simon Peter that he would deny him three times before the cock crow. He said, man, come on. Say, say come on, man. <laughs> Somebody say, come on, man. <laughs> he said, look, you gonna, you're talking about you got my back. Now, now you got to get the context of this. This conversation took place at night. Jesus said, they're coming to get me and they're going to arrest me and take me to be crucified. What was he talking about? He was talking about a few hours from then, early in the morning hours, okay? They probably picked him up around, you know, 12 or, or at midnight or 1 in the morning and then they had this kangaroo court at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, in the dark of night. So my point is, he tells Peter this and Peter says, I got your back, I got your back, man. And Jesus said, you're going to deny me before the cock crows. In other words, in just a few hours. He wasn't talking about in a week, six months from now. He was like, man, you're getting ready to put me down in just a minute. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? For somebody to say they got you and they lay their life down to you and then just go on and, 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 and uh, uh, deny you almost after the words came out of your mouth, that's pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah. But that's what happened. But then watch this, I like this part. But then Jesus said, but he also prophesied that Peter would be converted. He would be changed. And he said, now when you watch this, he said, but when, he said, I'm praying for you. He said that your faith wouldn't fail. And when you are converted, he didn't say if. Jesus prophesied that Peter would be converted. Somebody say changed. Anybody here been converted? Anybody here been converted? Boy, I wish there was more hands than that. I said, anybody here been converted? You, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. The word converted means to be changed. And this issue came up. I wish I had enough time to preach this thing this, today, but I'll just say it like this. This issue came up this week. And somebody made the, the statement, let's go out there and let's uh, evangelize the world and let's do it in humility because let's face it, we're all sinners. See, it didn't hit y'all. Yeah. That thing hit me and I said, I did like this. 
and I had to leave that meeting, I tipped out of there and said, I'm out. I said, because the Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? Oh, no, 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 no. We're not all sinners. I was a sinner, but I have been saved. God doesn't call me a sinner anymore. Sinners can't be used by God to lead other sinners to the Lord. Only saints can be used by God to witness to sinners. Can I get an amen, somebody? Listen, listen, listen. What did the Bible say? 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a... He is what? He's a new creature, a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. The problem with the church today is people are thinking that they're not converted because they still can sin or, depending upon how they're practicing righteousness, they may sin. Just because you can sin, just because you may have sin, if you're born again, that doesn't mean you are a sinner. In fact, the Bible even takes it even one step further. It says if you're born again, you don't practice sin. It says anybody who's born again does not practice. It literally, if you read it first time, it says anybody who's born again doesn't sin. But when you study it out, it means anybody who's born again doesn't practice sin. If you practice it, you keep on practicing sin as a born again believer. Guess whose job it is to check yourself before you wreck yourself? The Holy Ghost. Not just the pastor. The Holy Spirit. The, it will grieve the Holy Spirit. And oh, come on, anybody anybody had the Holy Ghost check you? Come on now. Hey, hey, come on now. Give me the wave offering up in the air. You know what I'm talking about. That still small voice. The Holy Spirit will check you and say, now you know you shouldn't have cussed them out. Now you know you shouldn't have said that. And you know that wasn't right. Now you, and, and now you know what you got to do. To uh, what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You have to get that. Now, now you got to use that same mouth, corrupt tongue that you had, and now you got to go back and you got to apologize because you are converted. In fact, this lesson right here is speaking about that. The sign of your. Listen to me very carefully. The, the reason I said we are Peter, because Peter, his problem overall in almost every instance in the, in the, in the uh, Gospels when he had a problem, it involved his mouth. Yeah. And I have news for you. Before you were converted, your main problem was your mouth. <laughs> Let the words of my mouth. Come on, help me out somebody, preach the thing. And the meditations of my heart. Be acceptable unto thee, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Amen. In other words, the problem is your tongue. You write the checks with your mouth that your... Oh, anyway. Okay, all right, let's get back here. You, 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 you're saying some stuff you don't need to be saying. And today we heard in the exhortation, it said, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Lock that thing down. Somebody say, let's start locking it down. Locking it down. And, 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 you know, there's another scripture that says, study to be quiet. And it, mean, and it means that you just got to start talking. Hey, well, the, the man, the, the preacher did say that God gave you two ears and one mouth. You're supposed to listen more and speak less. Listen to two eyes, two ears, and one mouth. You do the math. Look more, listen more, and speak less. And when you speak, the Bible says, let your words minister grace unto the hearer. Yeah, In other words, speak to promote instead of speaking to provoke. Mm -hmm. Speak words that will, that will edify instead of words that will, 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 will desecrate and, be, and, 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 and mess somebody up. Okay? All right. So here we go. So Jesus prophesied that when Peter was converted... He would help his brothers. He said, when you're converted, help your brother. Now, I said that included a victory over his tongue. And now, when, it, when Jesus' prophecy came to pass and Peter did deny him with his what? Tongue. He denied him with his mouth, right? Three times. You know what his reaction was? He wept better, bitterly. Look at Luke chapter 22, verse 62. 
So Peter went out, in other words, after he had denied him three times. In fact, you know that on the third time he denied him, what happened? He was cussing. When the folk came and said, do you know Jesus? He said, I don't know that. I don't know Jesus. <laughs> then somebody else came and said, hey, your speech betrayed you. you you're Galilean. You're one of the guys with him. You're one of his disciples. He said, I told you I don't know Jesus. Then the third time they came in, he, he got real scared because he figured the jig was up there. He said, I said, I don't know no blanket in like Jesus. Just as Jesus said. So Peter went out and he wept bitterly. Have you ever told the Lord that you were not going to do that thing that you do, that you shouldn't have done, that you swore the last time that you'd never do again, and you went out and you did it again, and the Holy Spirit convicted you, and you went out and you wept bitterly? Somebody say, we've all been there. All right? Now watch this. Watch this. The, we have all wept bitterly for denying and disappointing Christ. We have all. Maybe not in the way he did it. Not in the sense that, you know, I, I don't know him, but in the sense that you know what Jesus told you to do by his spirit. You know what he told you not to do, and you didn't do it. You didn't obey him, and, and you said you were going to obey, and then you went and did the very thing that he told you not to do, and it's like afterwards you just felt so convicted. And you whipped that whip wept bitterly about it. Amen? Amen? That's tough. But I got good news for you. Somebody say, thank you, Pastor. Amen. Say, raise up off us, please. Amen. I got good news for you. Just I said we're Peter. Just as Peter wept bitterly because he disappointed Christ. Just as Peter was given an opportunity to be restored so will we be given an opportunity to be restored by Christ. Give God some praise. That is, a, that, 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 is a, that is good news. It is good news to know that if you mess up, that God still loves you. That's agape. That's our God. You know, the Bible says, uh, 1 John 4 and 8, it says, God is love. That word is agape. It doesn't mean love like he loves you only when you are perfect. He loves you only when you when, when you obey every time. He loves you even, in, not, in other words, he loves you not just because of, but he loves you in spite of. You messed up. I messed up. But guess what? God is just looking for us to fess up, and he wants to bless us up. Can, can I get an amen? amen? He's still God, and he's, he's just weak. You know, people go, God has left me. No, God didn't leave you. You left God. He's still there with his, his arms outstretched. Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon yourself and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In other words, come, come and spend some time with me and understand I still love you. Yes, I may have to correct you, but guess what? That's okay. I forgive you. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Come on, church. Say, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Now, to prove what I'm saying is true, in 1 John chapter 21, uh, no, excuse me, John chapter 21, Gospel of John 21, verses 15 and 18, this is where we find uh, the restoration. Jesus is going to restore Peter with this agape, with this unconditional love. He's going to restore him with this unconditional love. Now, this is very important. Watch this, guys. Remember, he denied Jesus before Jesus' crucifixion, right? How many times did he deny him? Three. Three times. How many times did he deny him? Three, Three times. times. Jesus got crucified, and now Jesus is resurrected, and he appears to Peter, first to Mary, all right, Magdalene, then to Peter, and then the rest of the apostles, right? So now this is an opportunity. This is a time in chapter 21 of John where he has come to them, and at first when he appeared to them, they didn't know who he was. They were out there fishing, and he told them to go on the other side and fish on the, go cast the net on the other side. I tell you, when Jesus gives you some instructions, don't, don't try to figure it out. Just do it, because you may be on the wrong side. What you're trying to do may be on the left side. Somebody say, go to the right side. 
So he told them to cast the fish, and they got a lot of fish. And they looked at the shore, and they said, who is that? They said, that looks like this. And, and guess who the first person to jump in the water to swim back to the shore was? Peter. See, I told you, we are Peter. He messed up. He, but, 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 but he had this great love for God. I mean, he didn't wait to take his clothes off or nothing. He just jumped in the boat and started swimming. They're going to take the boat and try to get back to him. He said, forget that. I'm just going. That's the Lord. He gets to the Lord, and they're at the shore, and now they've caught a fish, and they're having some fish. The, the, the Bible says they're having breakfast, so I guess they're having some salmon and, you know, cream cheese or something. But, but, but anyway, they're having breakfast, fish for breakfast. Now, here they are, and they're sitting down, and Jesus restores Peter with his unconditional love and three charges to Peter, and then he gets three affirmative responses from Peter. Why did he give these three charges to Peter? Because he's given Peter an opportunity for every denial, he's given him an opportunity to make an affirmation. In other words, Peter said, I don't know him. And Jesus said, now, he said, I don't know him. I'm right. He said, Peter, listen. He said, do you, now this is interesting. The first time he speaks to him, do we have that, that scripture up there? I'm wondering. We don't? Okay, that's okay. The first time we uh, he speaks to him, he said, Peter, do you love me more than these? Now, this is interesting because you say, well, what, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? Do you love me more than the fish I'm giving you? No, he's talking about the fact, listen now, he's talking about the fact that when the last time Peter said he loved him, he was he was selling wolf tickets saying, I love you more than any of the disciples. There we go. I knew I had that up there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. He says, so then they had eat breakfast. Jesus said to Simon Peter, uh, Simon said to John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Now, what is he talking about? He's talking about, do you love me more than these other disciples? Why did he ask him that? Because the last time he talked to the Lord, he had told him, I'm the one who will go to prison for you. I'm the one who will die for you. I love you more than all the other disciples. Somebody say, wrong. But now here comes Jesus. Look how he restores you. The very thing that caused you to stumble. You know, God is that way. God is that way. You know, it could be a man. It could be a woman. You know, maybe they cause you to stumble. And then God will somehow bring that thing back around. And that very thing that caused you to stumble, he'll bring that person back to life so you can see them and just say, no, I'm changed now. And I just want you to know about Jesus Christ. See, he'll bring that to me. In other words, it's the evidence of your victory. They don't have that power over you anymore. Whether it's a, a, a romantic relationship, whether it was an administrative relationship, God's going to bring that thing in. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but I, I, I think somebody understands what I'm talking about. That very, maybe it's, maybe it's a drug, maybe it's an alcohol, maybe, whatever it is, but that very thing, he'll bring it back to you. The very thing that caused you to stumble and be destroyed, God's got to bring it back in front of you and say, now what you say now? And you say, hey, I know before I said I love you more than all of them, but I didn't prove it, but this time I'm saying it and I mean it. Praise the Lord. He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. In essence, more than any of them. Notice what Jesus said. He said, then feed my lambs. In other words, love gives. If you say you love God and you found the victory over that thing that, that messed you up before, then God is telling you, all right, I, I accept your rededication to me. I accept your affirmation to me, but now I'm asking you for something. Walk it out and prove it. He said, feed my lambs. Then he said to him again a second time. Why a second time? Because he denied him at least a second time. He said to him again, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then he said, well, then tend my sheep. He's telling them once again, I'm going to restore you for the one for the two, for the third tonight. But I need you to do something. I need you to take this, this forgiveness. I need you to take this restoration and I need you to go out there and anybody else who has, who has fallen because they didn't do right by the Lord, I need you to restore them too. Give God some praise if you understand what I'm talking about. Amen? Listen, listen. And then of course he goes to the third time. And then the third time he says to him, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Now watch this. Watch this. Here's the key. Remember what happened the third time that they asked Peter, was he with Jesus when he was warmed by the fire outside the trial? 
The third time, he was so agitated that, you ever have somebody ask you the same question more than once? I don't know, but I don't know if, that, if it's just me. Is, is it just pastor that that gets on my nerves? It, it's, it's just me, huh? I'm not as spiritual as y'all yet. It's just me. But when people ask me the same question and I answer the question the first time, it gets on my nerves when they ask me two or three times. I said the same thing I said the first time. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm just being, keeping it real. Can I keep it real with y'all? What I'm trying to tell you is when they asked Peter the third time did he know Jesus, he started cussing that third time. This time, the Lord asked him the third time, do you love me? And his flesh was still a little agitated, like saying, I told you I love you, Lord. But he didn't cuss. And what did he say? He said to him, watch this. He said, and he said to him, Lord, you know all things. And why do you keep asking me? You already know my heart. Say, he knows my heart. Yeah, God knows your heart. And this time, out of the abundance of the heart, there was no cussing. He just said, Lord, you know all things. That was powerful. He said, Lord, after all that pride I did, after all that desperation I felt, after what I did to you when you needed me the most, he said, I repented. He said, the very fact that you're coming to me right now, telling me you love me, telling me you can you still use me, telling me you got something for me to do. You know all things. Look at my heart. You know I love you. Praise the Lord. Does God know you love him? Give him some praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> then do what he said. Notice the third time he said, feed my sheep. Church, I want you to know today that God's faithfulness is greater than your failure. God's faithfulness is greater than your failure. And God's grace is greater than your mistakes. God's grace is greater than your mistakes. You blew it. You didn't do some things the way God wanted you to do it. You failed to do some things that God wanted you to do. But I have news for you today. The risen Savior, ah, ha, ha, the risen Savior comes to you and says, this is your opportunity to get it right. And he says, before you walk it out, you got to talk it out. Uh-oh, somebody didn't get that. Let me say it again. Before you walk it out, you got to talk it out. You got to prophesy to yourself. Say, I love you, Jesus. Say it again. Say, I love you, Jesus. Say, I'm going to feed your lamb. I'm going to tend to your sheep. Because I got news for you. That's what God wants for you. He, you can't pay him back for the forgiveness that he's given you. But what he wants you to do is he wants you to pay it forward. You can't pay him back, but he wants you to pay it forward to somebody else. And then you will prove that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Church, God has an opportunity of restoration for each and every one of us. But you need to understand, you are restored for a reason. You're not just restored so that we can give you a plaque and a certificate and you can walk around and say, I've been restored. Yeah, he said, but feed my lamb. Tend to my sheep. Feed my sheep. And church, God will be pleased. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. Amen. Praise God. We restore it for a reason. Hallelujah. Give God some praise with me. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his forgiveness. Thank him for his loving kindness and tender mercies. Heads of our eyes are closed. Saints are praying, and uh, we never want to end the broadcast without giving everyone an opportunity to express their love for a God who's already demonstrated his love for them. If you're not yet saved. In other words, you have not yet called upon the Lord to be the Lord of your heart. This is your opportunity to do so. Uh, would you simply pray this salvation prayer with me and believe it in your heart, and we believe that you will be born again. Please pray with me. Say, God, God I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. I, believe Jesus Christ I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Son of God. who died, died and, paid and paid for my sins and rose from the dead, from the dead. To, prove the to prove the same. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus come, into my heart. come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Lord and, Savior. and I'll serve you. And I'll serve Love you. you. All the days of my life. Days of my life. Now, if you prayed that prayer and believed it in your heart, we believe that you got born again, you got saved, 
you are not the same. You are no longer a sinner. You might, you might not feel goosebumps. You might not feel different. But I need to tell you, in the spirit, you're changed. And notice this. The number one thing is, it's not what people call you. It's not even what you call yourself. It's who God calls you. God says you are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now you just got to learn to walk it out. Give God some praise. Get into a good church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's our information right here. If you're in the Southern California area, come on down and visit us here at Truth and Love Christian Church in Carson, where we teach the truth and show the love. Let's give God some praise and see you next time. Next week on the broadcast. All